There's a quiet intensity inside the Tactical Operations Center for the Royal Canadian Battle Group. Canadian troops are out patrolling in southern Afghanistan. It's dangerous territory and everyone is watching closely. The security situation, uh, I don't want to say is unstable, but uh, there's, I mean, there's contacts uh, daily. According to operations officer Major Jason Guinea, the Canadians are seeing an increase in violence because of how his battalion is approaching the mission. We're taking the fight to the enemy uh, during the winter months when traditionally they've, uh, they've gone to ground. However, they are not doing this mission alone. They're getting some help. And it's coming from thousands of feet off the ground. From the sky, U.S. Air Force unmanned aerial vehicles patrol the ground, providing intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, also known as ISR, to the troops in the fight and to those in the operations center. This ISR mission is one of Secretary of Defense Robert Gates' top priorities in Afghanistan. Two of the UAVs the Air Force is using in Afghanistan are the MQ-1 Predator and its beefed up, fully armed cousin, the MQ-9 Reaper. Air Force Colonel Trey Turner flies them and has since 2003. He's also the commander of the 451st Air Expeditionary Group. He says a UAV brings what no other aircraft can to the fight. It can fly uh, routinely 12 to 22 hour long missions without having to come off target and go refuel. And then, and then get back on target. And then not only the deadly persistence, but it can do it covertly. Colonel Turner says the primary mission of his deployed team, which is made up of not only U.S. forces, but British troops too, is to launch and recover aircraft. Once they're off the ground, control is passed to a team in the United States. When it's time to land, control is passed back to the team in country. However, Colonel Turner says the work here in Afghanistan is much more than that. In accordance with the SECDES priorities, uh, we want to try to squeeze every bit out of air power that we possibly can. So, when pilots and the sensor operators they sit next to aren't launching or landing, they're flying their own full missions over the battle space. Major Guinea says this is a huge advantage for coalition forces. I can say hand on heart that the, that integration with armed UAV has saved Canadian lives on a number of occasions. And we can use armed UAV to sort of look at uh, ingress, egress routes, where the enemy's coming from, where they're going to. Uh, we're able to track him back to, uh, to his compounds. And with the, the, the loiter time uh, on these UAVs, we can stay up there for hours. I mean, uh, a few weeks ago, we tracked a target for 13 hours. Uh, we could have struck him right away, but we decided to, uh, to be uh, persistent to pursue them, and then in the end, uh, in the end, we were able to strike. Tracking and destroying the enemy is only part of the story. UAVs have also played a major role in counter drug operations. The narcotics in Afghanistan is the nexus uh, for the Taliban. It's how they're funding their insurgency right now. For this mission, Colonel Turner and his team have partnered with the Air Force's Office of Special Investigations. You guys ready to go? The most successful one was back in June, where. We found 236 tons of uh, hashish uh, and, and were able to turn that over to a direct action team uh, and the Afghans went, uh, were the leading element and leading force to go interdict those narcotics. According to the DEA, they indicated that uh, that 236 tons of hashish was the, the largest drug bust in the history of the world. Whether it's combat operations flown from the United States, ISR support missions flown in country, or aiding in the war on drugs, Colonel Turner, Major Guinea, and others agree the UAV brings a necessary and capable asset to the fight. In southern Afghanistan, I'm Marine Sergeant Brian Buckwalter.